in CK3, your starting position is likely to be the most important decision you'll have to make. Some starts offer lots of opportunities and flavor, while some areas are forgotten and are barely worth even trying to play in. But how about the easiest starts? What if you just want to conquer and barely face any setbacks during your run? Well, you're in luck, as today we're going to be looking at the top 5 easiest starts in Crusader Kings 3. No, easiest starts can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. I base this list on if their vassals like them, if succession is easy to deal with, positioning, army size, etc. But with that out of the way, let's start. Starting off at number 5, we have the Abbasids. So, the Abbasids are obviously huge. They are giant. The Empire stretches from the UAE all the way up to Georgia, and they start off with 112 counties, which is way more than average. Luckily for you, the Abbasids have a ton of just weak guys basically asking to be conquered. You can go up north to Georgia, go east into Persia, go south and go deeper into the Arabian Peninsula, or even go west and take out Egypt, and even take out a huge portion of Eastern Africa. There are two parts of the start, which make it pretty dangerous. Your guy, who has a name I will not try to say, obviously, is not a very nice person, and he has two sinful traits, which are definitely not good. They give opinion bonus of people of your faith minus 10, piety minus 1 per month, and zealot vassal opinion minus 10. So, if you have a zealot vassal, you're going to get a negative 20 opinion, which is horrible. And all these traits added together basically guarantee that at the very, very start of your game, everyone is not going to like you, and everyone in your realm is going to have a negative opinion of you. But luckily enough, it doesn't seem to affect them very much at all, for whatever reason. The second bad thing about the Abbasids is that they have two huge opponents throughout the entire game. The first one is the Byzantines, obviously. The Byzantines are huge, and they will love to just destroy you at any point you're weak. So, you have to be super careful about that. And another thing to worry about is Crusaders. Crusaders will love to just constantly attack you and go for Jerusalem. But, luckily for you, Crusades in this game are absolutely horrible. So, it'll be a cakewalk just destroying them instantly. A thing I forgot to mention is that your character starting off has a ton of claims that it can actually push. The most important one being Egypt. If I was you, I'd immediately push this claim at the very start of the game because... The tool and it's love to add like 10 people, and at that point, you're screwed. So yeah, definitely try the start if you want an easy game. Going to Europe for number 4, we have West Francia. I've already done this start 5 times, and every single time I've done it, I've been able to easily just create a massive empire. The positioning of the start is great. Out of every single Carling, you are guaranteed to be the strongest one by a long shot, unless they alley together, but usually you can kind of circumnavigate it, and make alliances go your way instead. The worst thing about this start, if you're a super new player, is succession, because you have two sons to deal with, and if you don't know how to actually disinherit people, your realm's gonna split apart between West Francia and Aquitaine. But if you figure that out, you're basically unstoppable. You guys really sit around the entire game, and nobody will try to really go after you if you stay strong, except maybe the Vikings. But they're kind of like the Crusaders when they go to your land, they basically starve to death and are easy to pick off. So it's kind of a non-issue there. Your starting ruler is pretty good. He's in learning, which is personally my favorite education to go down into. He's also stubborn, impatient, and deceitful, which are not good traits in my opinion. But they don't affect it too much to a level where you're getting constantly destroyed by your vassals. Your kids also aren't that great either. Prince Louis II, the Stammerer has a stuttering issue, which isn't the worst part of him. The worst part of him is being Craven, which is a horrible, horrible, horrible personality trait. And his other son, Prince Carlo Man of West Francia, is disfigured, which is not the best either, but his other traits are okay, so I'd probably pick him over the Stammerer. But whether you're a passive player or a super aggressive one, King Charles of Bald is definitely a great start and a super easy one at that. At number three, we have my wild pick. Count Hasting of Montague is definitely a kind of strange one on the list, but it's a super easy start. Sharing borders with West Francia, you think a guy with 3,800-ish troops would die immediately to him, but that is not the full story by any means. Count Hasting has access 
to one of the most broken CBs in the entire game, which is a Vrangan Adventure CB, which allows you to move basically anywhere you can reach and just settle over there. So you can decide to settle in London, Cordoba, Rome, Constantinople, just anywhere you really want. Count Hastings just has broken troop counts in his men at arms. The only risky thing, obviously, is you don't want to take out West Francia because he's stronger, but anyone else on the map, you can easily take out. Italy's a super easy pick. The Tulanids are an easy pick. Basically, anyone around you they can reach is a pretty easy fight. Tons of opportunities, tons of troops. Pretty easy start, in my opinion. At number two, we have a more diplomatic playstyle in the Jarldom of Upland. Jarl Bjorn, Ironside of Upland, is definitely not a conquering kind of guy. Starting off with around 1,500 troops, he's not really that strong, and he's not even the strongest in his area, but he does make up for that in just positioning and diplomacy. It can vary, but he'll probably start around with 20-ish diplomacy, and if you go down the foreign affairs focus, that can even make it higher to most effectively play as him. Go down the diplomat tree and pick up the trait diplomat, which gives you even more diplomacy and a plus 20 ruler opinion. Unfortunately for you peaceful guys, you will have to take out one extra county to get enough to form the Kingdom of Sweden. And after you form the Kingdom of Sweden, you can vassalize every single person a part of that kingdom. And same goes if you try to take out enough provinces for Norway or Denmark. Just immediately after you form those kingdoms, everyone will want to become your vassal. It's that easy. There are a few challenges for the start though. The first one is raiders. Everyone around you is going to want to raid you and just pillage you all the time. So. That can be a huge pain. If you're in a war far away, raiders will just come to your capital and just destroy it immediately. So you definitely have to worry about that. Another thing is the neighbors that were previously mentioned. The really strong ones could easily destroy you if they really felt like it. So be careful and stay strong. But yeah, just a super fun and a super peaceful start if you want to play that way. And at number one, we have probably the most obvious choice in the Byzantine Empire. I've played probably dozens of games where the Byzantines conquer 20 provinces at max and just stay that way the entire game with like no rebels, just nothing, just completely peaceful. They do start off at war with the Aglabids, but it's super easy. You way outnumber them like 3 to 1, that easy. So go to Sicily, destroy them, come back, and you can literally sit for 600 years just letting your rulers die building up your empire, and nobody will try to bother you. Maybe the Mongols will, but usually they don't get that bad to a point where they're trying to attack the Byzantine Empire. One thing you could worry about is your king. He did kill somebody, so he's a murderer, which is a general opinion minus 15. Basilius, Basileios, <laughs> I think it is, I don't know how to say that, is deceitful also, which is a sinful trait, which gives minus 10 opinion, Minus 1 piety a month and zealot vassal opinion minus 10 like I said earlier. So combined, the maximum opinion debuff you could have is 35, which is horrible, but it's something a little sway can't fix. Other than those two bad things though, the rest of his traits are pretty good. He's in martial, he's brave, ambitious, strong, and comely, which are all great to have. There also is a super obvious goal for every single Byzantine campaign, which is reforming the Roman Empire. Out of every single start you could do for the Roman Empire, I would have to say the Byzantines are by far the easiest start to just completely dominate everyone. You do have threats though. Khazaria to your north is usually kind of strong during the beginning, but they usually fall apart pretty easily. The Abbasids are also a pretty scary neighbor, but if you just spam kill their rulers, it'll fall apart super easy. There also is Bulgaria to your west, but... Every single time I played as a Byzantines, I've never had war declared on me by Bulgaria, so you should be okay. So yeah, that's my top 5 list. If you guys think there are easier starts in 867, just let me know. And thank you for watching.